you know these transistors that we that we found was the problem with this you know the the main problem with the stereo was is a noisy volume pot which is kind of typical and um, but we went through and had this this really terrible sound uh, noise in the uh, in the right channel as we went through you see now I've got it turned up there's no noise in right or left in the 8 track and that used to be the worst um, so when we used the signal tracer it was kind of nice to be able to tr use the tracer to come down to where we were narrowing it down to where we thought there might be a problem component and what was kind of convenient was is that since this was in the audio section we had a left and a right that was identical so I had a ready-made substitution to try for a suspected component so I could swap them to see if that made the problem move. If you remember when I thought the problem was transistor 20 I, I uh, swapped it with transistor 19 and the problem did not change. So when I got to 18 I was able to swap it to 17 and it did move so that showed us that 18 was the problem. Okay. But what if I was in a part of the radio that wasn't um, where I had a, a mirror circuit, like a left and a right channel, such as in the radio section or the, or the power supply section or something like that. Uh, then if I had a, a one or two suspected components, you know, I would be left with having to substitute them to see if that made a difference, you know, like I did with that resistor. Um, now it'd be nice if, if, if that was a convenient thing that you had, like another resistor, but what if this was a, a transistor you had to order, okay? Uh, it'd be nice if you could test it, but even if you didn't have a way to swap. So um, I have another piece of test equipment that I didn't show in this video, but uh, I made another video to demonstrate for you how this piece of equipment could be used to just take a, a transistor and test it. take a look at these two germanium transistors that we uh, that we pulled out of that board uh, here's the here's the one that was the troublemaker this is the one that was in spot 18 if you can see that you see where I wrote 18 on that and here's 17 now 17 was okay all right so That'd be interesting to see if we could have tested these to see if we get results that would indicate that one of these had a problem. So I have a tester that, that we can use and uh, it has a number of tests that you can do in circuit but with these out of circuit I can do a few others and so I thought it'd be interesting to uh, see what we get with this. So this is a Syncor Super Cricut. Uh, it's missing the label here, so if you're wondering where that is, it, it's been go it's long gone, don't know where it is, and you know what? It works just as well. So anyway, I've got a Super Cricut here, and I thought what I would do is demonstrate it, and we can see how it behaves with these uh, these two transistors, and we'll see uh, what kind of results we, we get using the Cricut. So let me get that set up, get the camera angle a little bit better, and we'll run through it real quick. Okay, so I'm not going to run you through the entire operation of the uh, of the super cricket but I will show you kind of one of the neat things some of the nice things about it okay so um, what you can do is you can use this for testing uh, most transistors and I guess some FETs uh, in circuit it's a really interesting device um, you don't have power going to the circuit but with power off you can test some of these transistors with it and mine has I still have my uh, where is it there's a retaining bracket on the back and I still have the the probe here on the back where you can attach these leads uh, into some little sockets in here and then you can use this these needles and push this against the traces on the back side of a board uh, if you know components are on PCs and, and PCBs and you can't quite get the the grippers on you can use these on the other side I find it a little difficult to use to be honest my hands are just not that steady I guess but anyway uh, sometimes it does work pretty well and the nice thing about that is 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 that not only do you not need to remove a transistor from the circuit to see if it's okay 
you also don't need to know how the leads are designated. And in fact, when I was doing the work on on replacing those germaniums, and I've had and I had these issues with, you know, where the different things went, uh, this could have identified that for me as well. Um, but the other one probably would not have been able to test things in circuit. And this does a few other interesting things. So let me kind of run you through some of the basics of what I can do. I'm trying to get to where this will get much parallax on the on the on the meter here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is use probably the most basic functions of, of this just to kind of show you how it works. All right, so you have you have these leads, and in case of of using a FET, there's a, there's another lead, a fourth lead that would be blue. Now, do you need to know which one of these go to what lead of the transistor? You do not. It will tell you which of these is the emitter, the collector, and the base, which is pretty cool. So if I take, for example, this transistor right here, this is number 17, this one turned out to be okay. I can grab the leads and I can hook them up randomly. Okay, I don't need to even pay attention I don't need to pay attention to which one's where, okay? I'm not even going to look. So I'm just going to grab this and randomly go to a spot. And I can randomly go to another spot. I have no idea if I'm doing this right or not. In fact, I can tell you right now. Let's see. Where's my dot? This is actually the uh, collector right here. So I know I'm not hooked up right. So that's fine. So you take that and you just connect it up any way you want. All right? It doesn't matter. It'll tell you what, what you got. All right, so set this over into the uh, cricket position because it's going to chirp at you. Turn it on, turn the power on, and the sound and that speaker. There's a speaker inside here, and there's a volume control in the back you can adjust, but I, it's fine where it is. And so I'm going to just put it in NPN. I know it said PNP, but we'll just run through it. So I'll put it in NPN and we'll just run through. And these buttons here, uh, these are called the permutators, and you know, it's just other models of this had like a, a switch on it, like a voltmeter. You could switch into different positions to get different permutations of what one of these leads was hooked up to which lead on the transistor. Uh, and this, they just came up with the design of using these six buttons and switching this polarity button. And between that, you can check what the different permutations are. So they call it a permutator buttons. All right. So uh, put this in the cricket position and just work our way through these buttons here. And we'll listen for a beep. Okay, I did not get one. Okay, so maybe it's not an NPN. Maybe it's a PNP. Maybe I've got a connection that's not hooked up properly. Maybe the transistor is bad. So let's go through and check. Let's go to PNP. So switch it to PNP and go through the buttons again. Okay, 3A. 3A is beeping and it comes up here and says good. Now, the one below it should beep as well. Let's go see. That's actually it says 3B on the bottom. If you look down there, it says 3B. Let's just see. Okay, 3A and 3B work. The others do not. So that shows a good test. All right, it's an, a PNP, and it uses buttons 3As, 3A, and 3B. So the question is, which of these is this? Is this an NPN or a PNP? Well, one of the ways you do that is you look at, okay, uh, let's, let's just lock the buttons and press in 3A. That's why they put a switch on here. Now, which one of these gives the biggest strength here? On gain. See, so do I switch to gain? 3A gain is 200. I can't see, you can't see that. There we go. Now at gain, we're looking at a beta of a little over 200, okay? And if I go to this one and press gain, it's less, okay? So that tells me that 3A gave the best gain result, all right? So now what you do is you use this little chart that's right here. This says lead identification, and this is just like a little table that you scroll through, okay? So you go to the one that says 3A. If you go to 3A, if you can see that, it is set up for both uh, transistors as well as FETs. So it says that green is the collector, yellow is the emitter, and red is the base. Okay, you see that? So let's take a look at what we had here. Well, we know 
that that right there is the collector and so green is hooked up to the collector that's correct if that's the collector then red would be the base and it is and yellow would be the emitter and it is so this thing just identified for us what kind of transistor this is okay so that's pretty cool you could do this in circuit and it would also test that it was good now one of the things you can do outside of circuit is test for its leakage all right such as uh, you know uh, you know collector to emitter leakage and so forth so I have a manual for this I got it in here with my other Syncor stuff and this is a, a TF30 you can see that and if we go to the manual I think it's page 10 and it talks about the kinds of results you should get on leakage leakage tests and so forth and I know you can't read this but basically it says over here um, here it says these leakages should measure zero for FETs and small silicon transistors high power silicon and low power germanium transistors we have a low power germanium transistor right may indicate up to 100 microamps leakage while high power germanium transistors may read up to 3000 microamps and still be acceptable okay so i take that as this is a low power germanium transistor and let's say that acceptable is up to 100 microamps of leakage so let's see how we do on that. So we're going to be on the leakage test, which is here in red. And the top scale of the red is microamps. And that's for base collector current and uh, um, gate source uh, as well. So anyway, we're going to look at the top red scale. And 100 is the good-bad, OK? We want to be less than 100. All right, so we've got this hooked up. We leave this in one of the buttons that was used for the identification, in this case 3A. Okay, and we're going to go over to the, not the cricket position, but the low power position right here. So now what we do is we push the leakage button. Pretty low leakage. It's trying to climb. not climbing very fast let's say that's pretty good right around there so let's say we be generous and say all right we're at 20 to 25 microamps okay it's still going all right so now what we can do is I've got these buttons locked now so I can go to 3b and try this one and go to leakage pretty much the same story huh so it's uh climbing up pretty slow. So this does not have a super high leakage. It'd be interesting to see how would the uh, TR18 do, which we had to replace. So let's try it, okay? I'm going to try not to go through this whole identification thing again. I'll just uh, try to hook up the leads the same way. Okay, so this is, this is 18. There we go. So here, this is 18. This is the one that was bad. I'm going to try to hook up the leads the same way as I have it there for 17. So let me see if I can do that. Green, I know, is on the collector. So we go collector. There's a green. Yeah. Now I think I said red was base. So that would be, that would be the base. And therefore, this is the collector. I mean, the emitter. And I'll, I'll check it. All right, so unlock the buttons. And it should be when I go into the cricket test, it should be the threes that are beeping. Yep. All right, so it's still hooked up correctly for what I had before. I can go through and check the gains and see if that's still the case. Let's see, 3A, gain is almost 200. And 3B, much less. So it's still 3A on the chart, so I've got it hooked up correctly, the same as the other one was. Okay, so now let's go to leakage. So I'm in the right position here. I'm going to turn the speaker off, lock the buttons, go to 3A, okay, and now I'll press leakage in the 3A position. We want it to be below 100. This one's already at 500. Okay, 
So there's already five times the amount of current leakage that should be acceptable for a low-powered uh, germanium transistor. So this is an example of a transistor that would have tested bad, and we were getting, um, you know, all that noise from this transistor. So it looks like it's caused by leakage. So you see, we're over 500 microamps, and 100 microamps was the acceptable. I'll try 3B and see what we get on that on that switch setting. 3B and leakage, and it's also over over 100. So you can see not only is this reading high compared to what the manual for the Syncor says it should be, is also substantially higher than what TR17 was, was giving us. So this is showing and kind of verifying that yes indeed number 18 was no good due to leakage. Alright, hope you enjoyed that little demonstration. This is a cool little unit. You can also use it for like if you're replacing transistors and audio outputs you can use the gain to match up uh, transistors so you have more or less equal gains and it also tests FETs. I haven't done that but uh, it's, it's been pretty handy. I've enjoyed it.